Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to throw a twist into this thing. All right. Because we know it's not an American flag, we know that it has a gold eagle and a gold fringe, and under Army regulations, that shows that this is a military flag, and it shows that we are under martial law because we are in a state of emergency. All right. What has been possibility put to me, and we need to go back in and actually pull the measurement on that flag. Now, that David Miller... David Wayne Miller, in one of his documents, he is sitting here saying that that flag is an inch short in dimension, in length, and in width. And that gold fringe makes up the length of what it's supposed to be under Title IV for regulations and under Army regulations, 840-10. All right, if that flag is an inch short, and they are flying the gold eagle and the gold fringe, where this now comes back into is under Roman law and the Vatican. What they're doing is they're impersonating what looks like a military flag in this courtroom, and actually it is a a Roman law Vatican flag that they have actually brought in, which now makes this a foreign state issue. Right. Now, Rod, the reason that they ha- have it as Roman is because it's Roman civil law. That's right. Okay, guys, let me explain that further for you. In your Black's Law book, uh, EJ accidentally found it. It's Roman law. It will also have Roman Catholic Church. Roman law takes you back to Justinian, back to 400 B.C., but Roman law transfers into civil law, which transfers into municipal law, and if it's the Vatican, by the way, the Vatican put the cupola on the White House, so the White House is under the rule of the Vatican. But if it's Vatican and they're doing this in our courts, that is international terrorism, folks. This is not a silly thing. It's very serious. Yes, it is. So now what we're coming back in and we're working on a document is that we're now coming in and making the issue in these courts. If it's not a constitutional court, and you're not a military court, and you're flying this flag, which is foreign because it does not fit the legal definitions of length and measurements. To be an American flag. Yeah, under Title IV and under the Army regulations, they can't come back and say, oh, well, we just got a shorter flag. No, because there's regulations that that flag has to be a certain dimension. And that's black ink on white paper, Rod. Yes, it is. And Title IV is in very explicit detail of the exact details of the flag and the rules and regulations of flying the flag. So this now comes into impersonation of trying to pass off a what we would assume was a legitimate flag, but because of it is a smaller diameter, it's a forgery, it's a counterfeit, and if they're bringing it in under Roman law, and from what Jeanette has brought up in the past, and we brought it up, and EJ's brought it up, that these people are under a Jesuit's oath under the Vatican, that means they are forcing fraudulent confessions off of the people in order to cover their own sins and buy their way into heaven. And this is something that we were not supposed to be aware of. And when I brought this up to several other people in the last couple of days, I was asked, how did you know about this? I said, because I've got a research team that's sending me information. I am deciphering it, and I'm coming up with the conclusion to this. And they said, what you have discovered, you was never supposed to know, and you're not supposed to be putting it out. I said, well, we are putting it out. We are exposing it because now under the Jesuits' oath, under Roman law, there is a canon's rule under the Vatican that these people have to follow a strict guideline, and they've stepped out of that canon's rule under Roman law, and now we're exposing it on them. All right, Rod. Roman law has the authority to take property, and that's verbatim in the Black Law Book under Roman law. All right, now, um, Rod and Jeanette, I looked up Roman law, and it's interesting, and it's a fairly good uh, definition, but it also says, um, this is in black, it also says, see, civil law. 
So let me just read you the civil lots, two paragraphs. This is Black's fifth edition. This may not be in the eighth or the ninth edition. Civil law, that body of law which every particular nation, commonwealth, or city has established, has established peculiarly for itself, more properly called municipal law, to distinguish it from the law of nature and from international law. Laws concerned with civil or private rights and remedies as contrasted with criminal laws. Second paragraph, the system of jurisprudence held and administered in the Roman Empire, particularly as set forth in the compilation of Justinian and his successors, comprising the Institutes, Code, Digest, and Novels, and collectively denominated the Corpus Juris Civilius, as distinguished from the common law of England and the canon law. The civil law, in parentheses civil code, is followed in Louisiana. And then and now it says see, see code civil. But anyway, that's pretty uh, telling. Yeah, in Louisiana you'll find that they are parishes. And in Louisiana you will find that that's the headquarters for the Rothschilds. And also down in Louisiana, you know, the Mardi Gras. You pay real close attention to the Mardi Gras, folks. What are they celebrating? Skeletons? Okay, all of that. Okay, that comes back to the skull and bones. Pay very close attention to your secret societies. The Jesuits is very, very, very bad. And by the way, they're using the Knights of Columbus as their military army force. Well, no wonder that America is so screwed up. we got pedophile priests running the place. Okay, now EJ explained to me that the reason that the priests have those sexual encounters with the young men is not just because they're perverts, it's because it's um, a, one of their worshiping to their gods. It's a, it's a sign of power. Now, a lot of our families came over here through Ellis Island to get away from England from religious uh, persecution. Now, I'm not against Catholics, I'm against evil. Now, I also explained to you guys, Nostradamus said 500 years ago that in the end, the Vatican will go into hiding. The Bible even says, in the end, it will be nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Folks, that's exactly where we are right now. But the point we're getting into with this, ladies and gentlemen, is that now we're coming in and we're pointing out that they're not running a constitutional court if they're running it under a military flag, and that's what they want to claim, it's like we brought up in the past under Title 10, 333, if they're running it under martial law, they have to maintain a constitutional form of government. They have to give us our protected rights. They have to follow the federal and state statutes. Now, if they're going to come in, and this, is, this flag is shorter, and it's being passed off as military. We got them for fraud by bringing up the Roman side of this thing. We got them on violation of a foreign state because that's a foreign jurisdiction. Because, number one, we have a, a law, what they have pushed for years and years, separation of church and state in a courtroom and in the country. So now we've got a... the. We've got a Jesuit priest sitting on the bench, and the state is bringing a claim. We're supposed to have a separation of power here. Doesn't sound like we do. That's exactly right. So this is part of what we're getting into and starting to dump in, because once we start exposing more and more and more of their fraud, and see, this, ladies and gentlemen, this is what AIB, Radio Free America, Private Attorney General, this is what we are on here. We're not out here to say, if you buy, our, you buy our paperwork for $500, and we're going to talk about our paperwork. None of these people are educating you. None of these people are showing you where the laws are at, how they're breaking it, how they've swindled us. All they're interested in is, I want money for my paperwork. On the shows that we are doing on Friday, Saturday nights, Tuesday nights, when Carl and I'm off, Carl brings in the PAG. Ladies and gentlemen, 
this is pure 100% education that you're not getting anyplace else. The paperwork is a bonus for what we're doing because if, that paperwork is no good if you don't have the knowledge and the understanding of the fraud and the corruption of how we got where we are sitting at. For someone just to sit down and say, okay, we're going to do a lecture, uh, my paperwork is $500, and here's the paperwork. Well, you didn't. Number one, you don't back up your paperwork. Number two, you, you're not talking about how the fraud is. You're just talking about you and your paperwork and how if I go use your paperwork and 500 bucks, this is going to fix my problem. They ain't fixing the problem. We're not being educated. We need the education. Well, we give ours away in the seminars for 200 <laughs> Yes. We need the people educated to understand the documentation that if you – the, the older people on the line, the new people that's on here, ladies and gentlemen, my paperwork is some of the most dangerous paperwork that you could put into the court because it comes in and lays out the entire fraud of what the court is doing. We're coming in and showing that that judge is operating in a foreign state capacity. Well, what do you mean foreign state capacity? Under the 1789 statute at large, the very first statute was oath of office. Title V, United States Code, 3331 to 3333, three, goes in, deals with oath of office for public officials. 5507 goes in, condition to pay. Okay, that's in the United States Code. Under Title 22, CFR, Code of Federal Regulations, 92.12 to 92.3031, goes in and it shows you explicitly how their oath has to be done. That isn't the issue on how their oath has to be done. It's the fact that it's under Title 22, Code of Federal Regulations, which happens to be foreign relations. Their oath of office is under foreign relations. Title VIII, United States Code, the moment they take their oath of office under Title VIII, Section 1481, they have to relinquish their national citizenship. That's not an option. That's not, well, do I really have to? They've got to. There isn't a choice. Title XXII, United States Code, again, foreign relation and intercourse, Chapter 11, Section 611. The moment they sit here and sign away their national citizenship, they have to sign themselves into the Secretary of State as a foreign agent. Ladies and gentlemen, these people aren't sitting down giving you this information. We are. We're putting it into the paperwork. We're not allowing the court any avenue on this stuff because we are exposing more and more of their corruption and that's why we brought in 11th Amendment. You know, ladies and gentlemen, the problem we're running into, in the, and we don't have enforcement, but I get phone calls day in, day out, and thank God no, I, I, it's slacked up here the last two weeks for me because I needed it. The thing of it is, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing wrong with the paperwork that we're putting in. Everybody is hunting for a magic word, a something that we could walk in, and another judge, and the judge says, oh, my God, you're right. And really the magic words come down to, your honor, the 11th Amendment clearly shows that you have no judicial power to hear any case in law or in equity or any controversies. And also the 14th Amendment, Section 1, clearly sits here and states that you cannot enforce any laws against the citizens or bridge their rights and privileges. So if you have no judicial power in law and equity and the 14th Amendment says you can't create laws against me, why am I in this courtroom? That's an excellent question. And also, Rod, you can't call him your honor under the 13th Amendment if the title of nobility. That's exactly right. So you ladies to... and gentlemen, we're sitting on the right answer. The problem is... We cannot guarantee that these suckers are going to do their job right. 
because there's money to be made, and that's why we're now going after the comptroller on this thing, because now we're exposing the money fraud to the comptroller, because he is the one who has to pay all of the debts incurred in that court that's created by the all-caps corporation state of or United States because they're trying to get money, so we're going to help them get the money. We're going to tell the judge to release the funds from the comptroller to pay the